I'm Jeanette Stone. I'm from Potts Camp, and I do mostly plant um, art. <laughs> well, I'm going to pan the camera around and I'll look at some of your fibers. If you don't mind, talk about some of the fibers that you're using. All right. Well, we'll start with this one. This is Daylily, which makes the wonderful cordage. Uh, this is my hibiscus plant. It's a little bit more like uh, seagrass rope, but it, it still is a good cordage. Uh, I've been practicing around with corn, <laughs> corn shucks. Okay. So I've got uh, some corn shucks in here. We've got blackberry that's to be turned into cordage. Uh, I'm not sure this plant, but they gave it to me at Camp Creek Native, and it makes a pretty, really pretty mm -hmm. So, um, and, and dandelions. That's my dandelion. Well, I, I've heard that you use dandelion, and I, it's always amazing to me that you can get a long piece of cordage from a dandelion. Right. It's the stem, uh -huh. and uh, they're... This, you just set them aside to dry, and these just happen to be really tall because it was before the mowing season. Mm -hmm. So you get really can get some long ones. And before you turn it into cordage, you have to spritz it, let it get pliable. Mm -hmm. So you dry it first, and then when you get ready to use it, you dampen it a little dampen bit. Dampen it, mm -hmm. let it get pliable, and then you can twist it into cordage. Mm -hmm. That's always that's neat. Well, I know these gourd instruments are something that you uh, have made in a, a a few years ago. Very many years ago, uh, before I did cordage and weaving and spinning, I I was into gourds. <laughs> so the gourd instruments were just something I thought was fun, and it was always good. Children enjoyed. Right. It's got a good sound, doesn't it? It does have a good sound. Talk about your uh, small baskets. Well, this one is a pine needle basket. I have just play around with the pine needles and the different stitches. Mm -hmm. um, some you can just leave kind uh -huh. of rustic. Uh, and this and the others are just trying to use the different grasses to see if you can turn it into a basket and. And you can. <laughs> <laughs> and the bottom, it's a mimosa bark. You, your spokes of your basket need to be a bark, you know, with structure. And then you can weave it with all kinds of rattlesnake master, uh, daylilies, iris. Mm -hmm. The red is elm. <laughs> so lots of different fibers. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> and on your loom, you're working on... This is an inkle loom, is that This right? is an inkle loom, um, and I've just, I wanted to weave uh, this tree pattern. <laughs> so mm -hmm. that goes along with the themes of plants, so. Well, uh, you have another uh, loom yeah. that you've been working on a project that I yeah. find very interesting. Yeah, these are the grasses. I'm just trying to see how they uh, perform. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm gonna create a scene, I hope, when I get the right cordage or in the right leaves. Uh, I'm gonna hopefully make a scene. Well, um, we'll see what happens. Let's move on over to your pigments. And, uh, right. Talk a little bit about how you develop these. Uh, I start out with a plant dye. Uh, there's one bug in the mix. It's a, the cochineal beetle. But, uh, but mostly plants, I make the dye, then you reduce it down to a paste, like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and once you turn it into a paste, you have to add alum to it. Alum stabilizes the pigment. Well, and, proportionally and, wise, uh, how much pigment and how much alum? Uh, I would have to find my recipe. Okay. <laughs> but it's, you know, it's usually just a, like a tablespoon or something yeah. for uh, maybe, let's say, a gallon or, no, a, a quart. Uh -huh. Something like a tablespoon to a quart. And, um, and then you dry, you let these dry um, because if you, you can use them as is, but 
they've got a lot of moisture in them. So you let them dry and then you add a watercolor medium to turn it into a watercolor paint. So. <laughs> Go back to the very basics of things. Very basics. Cause you know, when you're, when you're naturally dye, which all this, you know, you create all these dyes and then you just throw them down the drain. So that's why I decided to yeah. go that so I could mm -hmm. preserve the pigments a little bit longer. <laughs> so those are all natural pigments on this piece. Yes. And they're um, so vibrant. They are. Um, I'm gonna say the the purple though, I have to say, I believe my purple is not natural. I have now developed something that's more pinkish purple, but mm -hmm. uh, that one, I just needed the color, but yeah. the rest of it is natural dye. And this fiber is wool. That's wool. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's wool. Well, now you work with a lot of different fibers, correct? That's correct. And in here, uh, these, this is flax. I've spun, I bought the um, already processed fiber, and then I spun it into yarn. And some of these have, have been dyed. Um, this linen uh, started out as the fiber that I spun myself and then I wove it into just this fabric. It's so beautiful. Well, thank you very much for letting me interview you, Jeanette, and see all your fabulous things. Thank you.